All right, with this uh, forecast video update on this Wednesday, February the 5th, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. Well, I hope that uh, everyone had a wonderful uh, hump day, especially this is the first Wednesday of February. And, of course, it was warm out there across central Florida. We had lots of sunshine. We had a lot of warm temperatures. But changes are coming as we head into, especially late tomorrow night, into early Friday, because we're talking about, yes, a potential threat for severe weather that will be impacting our viewing area. And speaking of that, let's take a look at our severe weather outlook for tomorrow. Again, it's going to happen not during the day, but it's going to be in the evening. So just keep that in mind. And uh, as you can see, uh, areas in yellow across the entire viewing area, which, which that does include Orlando, Sanford, Kissimmee, Lakeland, uh, Titusville, Daytona Beach, Ocala, and Palm Coast. If you're in these areas right here, in the yellow areas right here, uh, that's what we call it a slight risk. So, yes, there is a standard uh, slight risk of scattered strong to severe storms as we head into uh, tomorrow night. But it looks like anywhere from uh, Brevard County, basically, if you live in Melbourne and Palm Bay, it looks like you're the only areas in Brevard County that may see just a lower risk of severe weather. But still, a couple of isolated strong to severe storms are possible. In the green, that is what we call a marginal uh, threat for severe storms. And if I go ahead, if I go ahead and uh, wind up the view here just a little bit, because it's not just... Florida that is under the gun for severe storms tomorrow night, but as you can see in the orange shaded colors right up here across parts of uh, uh, the Florida Panhandle into uh, southern Georgia and even all the way up towards the Carolinas, there is actually a greater risk of severe storms as we head into uh, tomorrow. As you can see, basically from Panama City Beach over towards Macon, Georgia into all the way up towards Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, that's what we call it uh, an enhanced risk. An enhanced risk of severe storms means there's going to be a numerous threat of severe weather as we head into tomorrow. But the threat here, once it gets closer to Florida, looks to be a little bit on the lower category, but still could see, uh, you know, some scattered strong to severe storms uh, here in central Florida. So just keep that in mind. So it means that uh, in the enhanced risk area in orange, that means there could be a potential for some very high strong winds, maybe a little bit of hail, and of course, maybe even a good threat of tornadoes up there as we head into uh, tomorrow. But for us here in central Florida, our, our threats of severe storms will be uh, just uh, damaging straight line winds between 55 to 65 miles per hour, potentially. Could be a little bit of hail, up marble to maybe dime, maybe pea size possible, but the hail threat looks to be really much lower. And we're talking about also maybe another threat for some isolated uh, tornadoes. Now, if you saw my post just a little while ago, it actually did, most of you just saw that the tornado risk here, basically from I-4 in West, which does, that does include Orlando, will be under that 5% uh, risk here. So that means there could be a little bit of a slight high chance for some isolated uh, tornadoes as we head into uh, tomorrow night. So you, so you folks, you've got to be weather aware once the squall line does roll in as we head into after dark. So just keep that in mind. Remember, uh, you, need to know, you need to know about the safe places to be during a tornado warning. Because remember, if your tornado warning does issue for your location or your county, you do the right thing by going to the safe place before the storm does get close to your neighborhood and stay and you stay there until th the threat passes. But the, uh, but, the, uh, but the good options to be, you know, during the tornado warning is to go uh, to the lowest floor, such as a basement. If you don't have a basement, that's OK, because the other options are in the, on the first floor of your home during a tornado warning is a ba or already said basement I meant to say a bathroom. A small interior hallway or a closet. Those are the those are the good, other good options to be during a tornado uh, as well. And remember, always bring your pets in. This pets into your safe place as well, along with your kids and the, even the rest of your friends or your families. And be sure to have the readiness kit uh, ready as well in case if your home gets hit by a tornado, which I'm hoping there's not going to be a whole lot of damage uh, tomorrow night. But we'll see what happens when the big threat comes in. So, so that's so that's. All I have to say here about the about the safety options about uh, tornadoes. So so just do the right thing. Just be safe out there, and just 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 watch me here on Facebook Live for any updates or see or or seeing posts uh, about the uh, potential severe threat. So just keep that in mind. All right. So speaking of severe weather, also uh, before is before that moves into Florida, we have a, we have a lot of uh, severe weather uh, going on right now across parts of Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama. Turn off the uh, risk of severe weather here, so y'all can see where the severe threat is, and it's basically right in about here, as you all can see. Yes, there is a lot of uh, severe weather warnings and watches in effect right now across parts of the, of the Missis Mississippi Valley region. And that is, a, and as you can see, that's producing a lot of uh, strong to severe storms over in this area right here. But notice that the yellow box right here, which it does include southeastern portions of Middle Tennessee, 
into parts of uh, Alabama and Mississippi. That's what we call a tornado watch that is currently in effect uh, right now. So, yes, a tornado watch is in effect for these areas right here and the yellow shaded counties probably until 11 o'clock uh, central time, I believe. So, so that's what we see right here on the radar. And also we got some warnings in effect right now here across parts of uh, Tennessee as well. Just to, well, just to, just now they've expired the uh, tornado warning up in, uh, uh, we'll say Marshall and Coffee, or yeah, Marshall and Bedford counties in southeastern Tennessee. And again, that's where I used to live. So I've, you know, know about, I've covered the weather uh, up there when I lived there for about 21 years before moving to Florida. But yeah, uh, Marshall and Bedford counties uh, did have a tornado warning, but just, this, but just now the warning just expired. But there is, are some severe thunderstorm warnings in effect right here uh, near the Alabama state line. So that's producing a lot of uh, straight line winds. And also not just that, but there's, but, but there's also some flooding going on across parts of eastern Tennessee, too. As you can see, there are a lot of flash flood uh, warnings and flood advisories also in effect for Nashville and areas off towards the east. And again, that is ahead of a cold front that will be moving through as we head into, uh, uh, especially after we, do, after we get done with the severe threat tomorrow night, we'll be seeing some cooler air. On Friday, which I'll explain more about that here in just a sec, or actually, actually in just a few minutes rather. So just uh, keep that in mind. Also, it's not just the uh, flood alerts, or well, not the flood warnings, or the severe weather, severe weather watches or warnings that we have here across parts of the Mississippi Valley region. But in the dark green, as you can see, there are all, there are also a lot of flash flood watches in effect right now. Basically, which includes eastern Tennessee, includes Chattanooga and Knoxville, also over towards Atlanta, uh, Columbus, into Montgomery, Alabama, into the Carolinas. So yes, there are a lot of flood watches in effect right now as well, where they're expecting some pretty decent heavy rains with these uh, big threat of showers and storms as we head into the next uh, 24 or 48 hours. So yeah, so lots, so lots to talk about here tonight as far as severe storms go. So again, here in Central Florida, we're expected that we're expecting the uh, severe threat to hold off until tomorrow night as that squall line does um, push in. So just uh, keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, temperatures. Let's look at the high temperatures that Central Florida did see earlier today before we get to future casts of, of when the storms will arrive in your neighborhood. So I'll just hang on just a second here. So, so, going, back, so going back into uh, this afternoon, uh, again, and again, the weather has been warmer here across Central Florida today, and it actually got we actually got above 80 degrees for some locations here earlier today as well. So like for example, here in Orlando, we did hit closer to 80, but not quite. Temperatures earlier today for highs were in the upper 70s, so it was 79, 79 degrees earlier today here in Orlando, and then down in Kissimmee and Osceola County, temperatures were also in the upper 70s for highs uh, earlier today, and even once you go down towards Lakeland and Polk County. Look at this. The high temperature did reach 80 degrees earlier this afternoon as well for a high temp. And then for Titusville, it was a little cooler, but still warmer. Uh, you see temperatures today were in the mid-70s uh, there. And then for Sanford and Seminole County, the high was also 75.2. And then for Daytona Beach, the high temperature earlier today was closer to 80, but it was 79. And then also up towards Palm Coast and Flacco County, the high temperature was 77. Uh, and then up towards Ocala. High temperature was 78 today, and then for the villages, the high was actually 80. So yes, mostly, most, almost of all, almost the entire viewing area did see mid to upper 70s this afternoon, but others did see low 80s. Like, like I said before, the villages in Lakeland did reach a high temperature around 80 uh, earlier today. And yes, it was another dry day here in Central Florida, so we haven't seen a whole lot of rain uh, as well. So, so just saying there. All right, so let's take a look at the current temperatures right now across uh, central Florida at this uh, 8 o'clock hour. And uh, as you can see, we're cooling off just a little bit, but we're still mild out there. So we got temperatures right now in the low to mid-70s here at this hour. So right now here in Orlando, for example, we got the current temperature at about 72. We have 73 right now in Kissimmee. We got 71 right now in Titusville. 72 is the current temperature as well down towards uh, Lakeland and Polk County. We got 71 right now in the villages. We got 72 in Ocala. And 71 is the current temperature once you go up towards Daytona Beach and Palm Coast. So not, so not too bad uh, to be outdoors this evening if you do have some. Uh, whether if you're going to see the fireworks shows at the attractions or going out to dinner or something like that. I think you'll be, I think you'll enjoy these uh, warmer temperatures if you're a big fan of that uh, as we head into uh, the rest of this evening. So, so there you go. All right, now to Futurecast. Again, all of you want to know when when I'm going to get when I'm going to see the storms hit in my neighborhood. 
So that's the question you guys are might be asking uh, right now. Uh, we're, I'm going to show them right now here on FeatureCast here, so just give me just a second. And remember, if you're just coming on into the Facebook live stream on this uh, Wednesday evening, remember, don't forget to go ahead and share this uh, feed to your other Facebook followers, because you know my motto, sharing is caring. And of course, since we have a threat of severe weather tomorrow night, I bet it'll be really, it'll be really informative for your friends and families to know about the uh, about the potential for severe storms uh, as we head into the evening hours. So just keep that in mind. So so if you can, just share this feed. All right, heading into this evening, and I know you guys noticed there are some showers right now that are forming across parts of Central Florida, as you can see on Featurecast as we head into the rest of this evening, but. We're not seeing that right now across the viewing area, so just ignore what you see here on FeatureCast. So I don't think we're not expecting any isol isolated showers tonight. Maybe a brief shower, but most of us will be looking uh, pretty good as far as evening goes here in the viewing area. But looking pretty, dry, we'll, we'll be looking pretty dry though as we head into the overnight hours uh, late tonight, and even the same thing early tomorrow morning. Once you step once you step out the door for work and school, looking pretty good as well with a pretty good sunny start. And then as we head into this afternoon, or not this afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, excuse me, uh, before the squall line just rolling, we'll see maybe a few showers that may try to develop here in central Florida, like, like, like for example, uh, anywhere from the attractions, including Universal, SeaWorld, Disney, Kissimmee, Lakeland, and Ocala, there could be a few showers that may try to develop here as we head into 1 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow, but others should be looking pretty dry with mostly sunny skies. And yes, it will be another warm day before the big front along with that squall line uh, does move in as we head into tomorrow night. And it looks like Orlando could get a little bit of rain, too, as we head into uh, 2 p.m. as well. So, again, the rain will be isolated and quick moving, so just keep that in mind if you got big plans outdoors tomorrow. So, so just saying there. And then as we head into the rest of the afternoon, same thing. More isolated showers may pop up here across parts of the I-95 corridor. But, again, it's not going to rain all day tomorrow, at least during the day. Uh, so if you have any plans going on, again, whether if you're going to the beach or going to the attractions or whatever you got going on outdoors during the day tomorrow, besides work and school, um, just know just know that a few showers that that will do that do develop will be quick moving and they should be moving out of out of your location pretty quick. But otherwise, it'll be mostly sunny and warm. All right, guys. Well, here's the big line of storms here that will be forming here as we head into 9 o'clock tomorrow night. So it looks like anywhere from the Gulf of Mexico area, it looks like they'll be the first ones to get to get to see some storms to uh, become strong to severe. So anywhere from near Gainesville into near the off the coast of Clearwater and St. Petersburg and Tampa, that's where the, that's where your folks could see the squall line. They'll, they'll get closer to, to move in your, to your locations as we head into uh, this hour. So this is 9 o'clock in the evening tomorrow, but still ahead of the line. Still a few showers could pop up here across central Florida, but it's not going to be raining everywhere as we head into the evening, especially around 9 o'clock, like what you see here on FeatureCast. And then as we head into uh, 10, 11, midnight, here it comes. Here it comes, guys. Uh, so, again, so it looks like the squall line will push, in, in, will push inland into central Florida, basically west of I-4. As we head into midnight, what it shows for right now. And what to let you folks know, we're, since we're still 24 hours away till the line moves in, the timing could still change here, so just keep that in mind. We still think it looks to be from evening into the early overnight hours that we're expecting the line to push in into our viewing area. But at midnight on feature cast shows for now that the, that the line of storms will, will move into uh, Flackler, into uh, Volusia, into Lake, into Sumter, and Polk counties as we head into the midnight hour, and not Orlando quite yet. But still could be a few showers ahead of the line uh, as we head into that time frame. But it won't be until, I guess, about between 1 or 2 o'clock or so. I think we'll see the squall line come through uh, the Orlando Metro and right along the I-4 corridor and off towards the east. So, and again, with the squall line, these storms could turn strong to severe. That's why there is a slight risk of severe weather here and all across the entire viewing area as we head into uh, tomorrow night. That's why I said the main concerns will be damaging straight line winds. Could be a little bit of hail, about mobile to maybe P uh, dime size. And a few possible spin-up rotating storms will be possible as well, which will be isolated tornadoes. So that's why you folks need to be weather aware tomorrow night before the line does roll in. So just keep that in mind. And taking you to 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday, it looks like the looks like uh, Brevard County may see the leftover uh, showers or storms ahead, of, at least ahead or behind the squall line as we head into that time frame. So it looks like the squall line may be pushing from northwest to southeast in the in that general direction 
as we head into the as we head into tomorrow night into the early morning hours on Fridays with the shows here on Featurecast. But already behind the squall the squall line again will be the cold front and it'll already pass through Central Florida as well, and that's going to bring temperatures a whole lot cooler as we head into uh, Friday afternoon. But still, there could be showers though behind the front and the squall line here around the I four corridor and off towards the east as we head into the early morning hours. So I think an umbrella could be needed for the morning commute, but I think during the afternoon we'll be we'll be in the clear from the rain, so just keep that in mind. And then as we head into about around six or seven, it looks like by the time the sun does come up, we'll see the most of the rain pushing off towards the Atlantic and just seeing maybe just a few leftover isolated showers here up in north just to the north and west of Orlando, but looking dry for the rest of our viewing area. And then as we head into the rest of the day, uh, towards the end of the work week, we'll be rain free. So if we got any plans going on Friday afternoon. We'll see the sun come back out, and it'll be looking perfect. But again, it'll be the temperatures that'll be feeling different as we hand it to you that day. Because of that front, they'll be moving through, and that'll give us temperatures a bit cooler. Which we'll see the highs and lows here on Futurecast in just a minute here, so just stay tuned for that. And this will carry all the way through early uh, Saturday morning about after midnight. So looking dry all day Friday afternoon, all the way towards the weekend. So there you go. Now, how much rain Central Florida could pick up with these uh, storms tomorrow night? Well, here's a look at the uh, rainfall totals here, at least the forecast totals we're expecting for the next uh, 48 hours in Central Florida. And, of course, it's going to be just a second here so I can pinpoint the quarries here around Central Florida. Here we go. And, of course, we'll give it just a second to, a second to load up a future cast here. So just hang tight. So as we head into the next 48 hours, this, this is how much rain Central Florida could pick up once the line of storms do roll in here by tomorrow night. And as you can see, that we may pick up uh, between about uh, three quarters to maybe an inch of rain here in Orlando. As you can see, areas in green. And also does include not just Orlando, but also for Kissimmee. Uh, Titusville, and maybe uh, somewhere around Ocala and also around the villages. So these areas here in green could pick up between about a half to maybe three quarters to maybe an inch of rain possible. At least the totals are lighter, so we're not expecting any big totals that could rain like flooding concerns. So none of that is expected as we head into the next 48 hours and when the line does move in as we head into tomorrow night. But others here, uh, anywhere from Sanford into uh, Daytona Beach and maybe Palm Coast, if, it, if I'm correct there, it looks like it may pick up between about, uh, maybe about maybe about a quarter to a half inch of rain, possibly even the same thing down at around Lakeland, too. So right along the I-4 corridor from Seminole to Volusia and Polk County, she may pick up, again, just between about a, a quarter to a half inch of rain. But everybody else here in the green shaded colors here may, may see a half to maybe three quarters to maybe an inch of rain. So that's what you could see as we head into the next 48 hours, including uh, the line that will move in as we head into tomorrow night. And that's the squall line I'm talking about. So just uh, keep that in mind. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the pre or not precip, uh, the temperature part on future cast and show you we're expecting for highs and lows for the next couple of days here because, you know, most of you want to know how cool it's going to get on Friday after that front passes through. Well, let's take a look at that uh, right now. And again, this is this is the temperature part on Futurecast here. And again, we're looking mild here. We're looking pretty mild here at the, as of this evening. So, like I said, if you have any plans going on for the rest of tonight, whether if you're going to uh, dinner or going to see the fireworks at the attractions, you'll be good to go. But maybe a brief shower can be possible. But otherwise, we'll be, be looking dry. All right. So here's the temperature part on Futurecast here. So uh, before before the front moves in here uh, during the day tomorrow. Well, first off, this is the morning of tomorrow. So as we get so as we wake up early tomorrow morning, we'll see low temperatures get down into the mid to upper 60s across central Florida, maybe 70 as well. So we'll be looking pretty mild to start our day as we head into tomorrow. So, so I don't think you would need a jacket or a sweater uh, since it'll be warmer out there early tomorrow morning. So I think you'll be OK to not wear a jacket. So just keep that in mind. And then as we head into the rest of the day on your Thursday before the big front moves in, we'll see temperatures, again, get warmer into the low to perhaps even mid-80s across central Florida. So like, for example, we could see a high temperature tomorrow at about 82 here in the metro and around the attractions. We could see a high around 81 for Sanford tomorrow. Same thing for Titusville. Also for Daytona Beach and Palm Coast, you may see a high temperature get up to about 81 degrees as well. 
And then you may see and even the same thing for Sanford and also for Kissimmee. You may see a high temperature tomorrow afternoon also at about 81. And then 80 could be the high temperature for both the villages, Lakeland and Ocala. So, yes, another warm day is expected here across the entire viewing area as we head into uh, tomorrow afternoon before the squall line of storms do roll in along with that uh, cold front. So, so here's the front right there. So it'll come in pretty quickly once the line does move in as we head into uh, tomorrow evening into the overnight hours. And once the front does move out... Here's what, we're, here's what we're expecting uh, early Friday morning as you guys wake up. It's going to be feeling pretty chilly. So we drop quickly from 80s down into the uh, 50s, especially for lows early Friday. So, so you may need a jacket or a sweater, uh, kids, and even for adults too, before you head out the door for work and school. Because look, look what we're expecting for lows here early Friday morning once the, the line in the front does move out of here. We're talking about temperatures getting down into the low 60s here in the metro Orlando area. Upper 50s here around Sanford, Titusville, Kissimmee, and Lakeland, and mid 50s farther up north you go into uh, Daytona Beach, Palm Coast, the Villages, and Ocala. So yes, it'll be a not just a cool but a chilly Friday morning here in the viewing area. So yes, a jacket and a sweater will likely be needed to wear as you bundle up before you step out the door for work and school early that morning. And again, that's on Friday. And then as we head into the day on at least Friday afternoon. Like I said, since there'll be a front moving through early that morning, it's not going to warm up that much. So at least it'll be dry, though. It'll be sunny. But like I said, it'll just be the temperatures. They'll be feeling a bit different. So instead of seeing 70s or 80s like we're going to see uh, tomorrow, and like, we'll be, like we'll be seeing earlier today, we're only going to see upper 50s and low to mid 60s across central Florida for highs. So like, for example, here in Orlando, the high temperature on Friday could get up around 62 degrees. Same thing uh, for you guys down in Kissimmee, uh, Lakeland. 63 for the high temperature potentially on Friday in Titusville. Can see a high around 61 in Sanford. Also for Daytona Beach, same thing for you. Same thing, well, closer, but the villages, you may see a high temperature Friday at about 60 and upper 50s once you go up towards Palm Coast and Ocala. So, yes, a cooler day is ahead as we head into uh, Friday. So just um, uh, keep that in mind. And, again, that won't be until after the front passes through along with that squall line as we head into not just tomorrow night, but also early Friday. So there you have it. All right, I see that uh, Enrique Errington is uh, in the house. Well, good to have you. Uh, good evening also. Yeah, I'm doing well, uh, Enrique. Thank you for asking. I hope you're well as well. And I hope you stay warm on Friday too, since we got cooler weather on the way. And, and uh, well, for your, for your Animal Kingdom Day this weekend, Enrique, I'm gonna explain about I'm gonna explain about that with the with the weekend forecast here when we look at the GFS in just a second. But because I think we're gonna like the weekend forecast because I don't think it's not gonna be as cool as we get into uh, Saturday and Sunday. So I think Friday will be the only day we'll see temperatures uh, remain cool um, after we deal with this uh, line of storms here late tomorrow night. So just uh, keep that in mind. But let's get through future cast here first of all. So again, upper 50s, low to mid 60s for highs on Friday. And then we'll drop it to the 50s uh, as we get into uh, sunset. So, yes, a sweater and a jacket will likely be needed if you're going to be heading out uh, out the door for outdoor plans that evening. So please bundle up if you can uh, that night. And then as we end the clock all the way towards after midnight, uh, late Friday night and early Saturday, I think we'll see low temperatures get down into the mid to upper 40s and 50s across central Florida. So it could be another chilly start to the day on Saturday as we start off the second weekend of um, February. So uh, there you have it. And before we get right to the uh, GFS uh, here for the next couple of weeks, when we look at the uh, forecast models, uh, let's get a check of the radar here because we didn't get to, get to check uh, check it uh, earlier this evening, or, or say a little while ago, rather. And uh, as you can see, yes, we are looking rain-free here across central Florida. So like I said, we don't see any rain right now, and we're not going to see any of that tonight or during the day tomorrow, but maybe a couple of chances for showers possible, at least isolated. But the big line... Of showers and storms, once again, guys, will be tomorrow night. So keep saying that several times here, but just want to say that again in case of you, in case if you, that wanted to know again. All right. So now it's the weekend. So starting with uh, Saturday, after we deal with, after a day of cooler temperatures on Friday, I think we're I think we're going to be seeing uh, not as cool temperatures on Saturday as we get into the second weekend of this month of February. So. Um, so we'll look at the highs here in just a second here. But the weather, though, for Saturday looks to be pretty nice 
actually, we're looking at uh, mostly sunny skies here in central Florida. So looking uh, pretty nice there. It'd be good. It'd be a good day to be outdoors. But as far as high temperatures go uh, for that day. And uh, it looks like it could be a little bit cooler on Saturday, but again, it will not be as cool like we'll be seeing on Friday. So instead of seeing low to mid-60s, I think we're going to see upper 60s and low 70s across central Florida as we head into that day. So Enrique, if you're maybe planning on going to Animal Kingdom on Saturday, uh, I think you'll like the slightly cool temperatures, but not going to be as cool like it, like we'll see on Friday. So, so there you go. And of course, if you've got other plans going on uh, for the rest of you, outdoors on Saturday. Again, it shouldn't be too bad uh, to be outdoors. At least we'll see lots of sunshine, too. So, so there you go. Heading into the second half of the weekend, which is uh, Sunday, and it looks like we'll see yet again another dry day in central Florida, so more sunshine is expected, so we don't have to do with any more rain uh, as we hand it to uh, that day. So if we got any plants going on outdoors, then same thing. You'll be uh, you'll be good to go. But I think we'll see temperatures start to warm up even more as we head into it that day. So instead of seeing 60s uh, like we'll see on Friday and some on Saturday, I think we'll see uh, temperatures warm up to uh, mid-70s across central Florida. So it should be better, should be better uh, than Friday or maybe Saturday. So if you plan on going to, uh, going to the beach or heading over to the attractions uh, that day, uh, it looks like we'll be looking in a pretty good shape. So looking at a pretty good weekend here in central Florida. So no rain to deal with here, and we're not expecting any big cooler or chilly air uh, coming in as we head into both Saturday and Sunday. So, so there you go. All right, now heading into uh, the first half of next week, we're going to start with uh, Monday the 10th as we start uh, mid-February. It looks like we'll see the same thing, I believe. Another day of uh, dry weather across central Florida, but notice here on the GFS, there may be another system that, that may try to bring some rain across parts of the uh, Florida Panhandle into Mississippi and Alabama, but we may have to see if it's going to be bringing us a little bit of rain here in central Florida or not by the upcoming work week, so that's a possibility, but we'll see. But if, if there's any rain for next week, it looks like it will be lower, at least as far as chances go, but otherwise it'll be mostly dry with plenty of sunshine like you see here on the GFS for Monday, so... So looking good there that day, and as we look at the uh, high temperatures down below, we're looking at uh, pretty warm. So looking much warmer as we head into uh, Monday as we get back into the mid to upper 70s and maybe lower 80s for some of us as we head into uh, that day. So that'll be a, definitely a good beach day uh, for those who are heading over to, again, the beach on uh, Monday or if, or if you expect to be having a pool day or a little pool party as well. Should be a good day to do, should be a good day to do that as temperatures will be much warmer. So, so there you go. So it looks like it may not be until Tuesday we'll see maybe a little bit of rain to move back into uh, central Florida. But I don't think it will, won't be raining all day, so just keep that in mind. So we'll give about a 30% coverage of a few isolated showers, if this is correct, as we hand it to uh, a week from yesterday. This is Tuesday, February the 11th. And the good news is I don't think we're not expecting any severe weather or any thunderstorms with this uh, next disturbance, so just keep that in mind. So it'll just be lighter rain we're talking about, so just letting you guys know. And as we look at these uh, high temperatures below, with these uh, rain showers, they'll develop here on Tuesday, but it'll be isolated. We'll still be warmer with upper 70s and even lower to maybe even mid-80s as we head into uh, that day. So looking great there as far as temperature-wise go. So if you have any outdoor plans uh, for for Tuesday, whether if you're going to the beach or going to uh, the attractions, whatever you got going on outdoors, outdoors weather-related uh, that day, Again, any rain that does develop will be isolated and quick moving, so it will not be an all-day rain event for Central Florida because the rain chances will be much lower. But just be aware there could be a few showers that may try to develop as we head into uh, that day. So just saying. And the rain does taper off uh, out of Central Florida as we head into uh, next Wednesday. This is a week from today, the, uh, the 12th of February. It looks like we'll see uh, rain tapering off into uh, sunshine. So we'll see some sunshine again as we head into uh, midweek. So all the rain that uh, that'll be developed on Tuesday will will push up uh, north or, you know, fizzle out as we head into uh, that day. So that's going to bring maybe a little bit of rain here across parts of uh, northern Florida and parts of the Atlantic here, but off the coast of Jacksonville. But here, looking great as we approach midweek. Could be a little isolated shower or two up in Flacco County, but otherwise looking okay here as far as the weather goes for Central Florida. So that's next Wednesday. 
And as we look at these uh, high temperatures below, we'll be looking much warmer. So instead of seeing, again, upper 70s or low 80s, well, some of us may see low 80s. Uh, we could see mid-80s as well across central Florida. So we're talking low to mid-80s for high temperatures as we approach midweek. So so it's going to be turning much warmer as we approach uh, uh, not just um, early next week, but also midweek, which I think it may continue also for the second half of the week as well. We'll have to look at the uh, GFS, or, or say the next one rather, on the GFS here in, uh, right now. See what how it plays out. So, so let's do that. All right, taking you to a week from tomorrow. This is Thursday, uh, February the 13th. It looks like we'll see yet again another dry day in central Florida. So it looks like the good chance of rain, as you can see, across parts of Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia will stay up there. Uh, and that may track from the southwest to the northeast instead of moving to our directions. So they'll keep our weather pattern dry as we head into uh, that day. Maybe a coastal shower or two can pop up here around parts of Brevard County, too, that day. But otherwise, we'll be looking sunny and dry as we approach the late, at least the the later part of the work week next week, again, as we get into uh, mid-February. And as we look at these uh, high temperatures yet again, we'll see the same exact thing like we'll see on Monday through Wednesday. But for next Thursday, we'll see temperatures in the low to mid-80s. So especially with 80s for high temperatures, there'll be some good beach days and good, uh, good pool days as well uh, as we head into uh, that week. So if you have a pool in your backyard or in your back deck or if you plan on going to the beach or go to the water parks at one of the attractions, I think it'll be a pretty good week to do that since it will be a lot warmer with highs in the 80s. So, there you go. All right, taking you to a week from this Friday. This is next Friday the 14th, and I believe that's Valentine's Day. And it looks like if you plan on going out uh, with your sweethearts, whether if it's during the day or at night, uh, it looks like it'll be pretty good as far as the weather goes here. Let's hope it stays that way uh, for next Friday, because I know, I know most of you want some dry, dry weather for the Valentine's Day holiday. But once again, there could be maybe a few brief uh, isolated showers here in Brevard County, but otherwise looking mostly sunny and dry across the entire viewing area. But notice here up towards Mississippi, Alabama and Georgia, uh, as you folks know here, that uh, there may be another system that we try to develop as we head into that day. And that could bring maybe a soggy rain event for these folks for Valentine's Day, at least for Atlanta to Birmingham and Jackson, Mississippi, as we approach that day. But luckily, since we live, we live here in Florida, not for us. So no rain is expected for Valentine's Day next Friday. Again, we're just hoping it will stay that way. And as far as high temperatures go for the special uh, holiday, we'll be still looking warmer with highs in the low to perhaps even mid-80s in central Florida as we head into uh, that day. So if you got big plans going on outdoors, again, whether you're going to the beach or going to the attractions with your sweeties uh, on the holiday, I think it'll be a pretty good day to do that. So, so there you go. And the day after Valentine's Day, as we start the President's Day holiday weekend, it looks like we'll be looking dry, especially on Saturday of next weekend. So the first half of the holiday weekend looks to be dry in central Florida. So same thing, more sunshine. So the big chance of rain will stay farther up north bringing some showers and maybe some thunderstorms across parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. But again, not for us. So the day after Valentine's Day, if you're planning on going with your, sweet, with your sweethearts again, maybe a little late if you didn't get a chance to celebrate, if you didn't get a chance to celebrate Valentine's Day next Friday, which I think all of you do. But if you don't, then if you want to get a, get a chance on Saturday, we'll be looking dry here in the viewing area. So more sunshine, so perfect day to be outdoors. And as we look at these uh, high temperatures below, still looking warmer with highs in the low to mid 80s here across central Florida. So it should be a good, a good, so this should be another good beach day, uh, water park day, or pool day also as we head into uh, that day. I mean, that's Saturday of next weekend I'm talking about, so just keep that in mind. All right, now taking you to uh, Sunday the 16th, the second half of the President's Day holiday weekend. It looks like we'll be seeing more dry weather in central Florida, so more another day of sunshine. Again, all the rain is going to stay farther up north into the Mississippi Valley, Mississippi Valley region. That's that uh, track, the storm track of the system tracks from northwest, or excuse, excuse me, from southwest to northeast as we head into it that day. But luckily, no rain for us. And as we look at these uh, high temps uh, down below, Still looking much warmer with highs in the mid-80s across central Florida. But I would not be surprised, though, if some spots could hit upper 80s as we hand it to, uh, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. So that's something we may have to watch carefully. If we do see upper 80s, which we don't know, but it might, 
on the second the second half of the President's Day holiday weekend, I think we could see potential records, at least the warm record temperatures. So we'll see. And by the way, we're getting into the land of voodoo country, so it could change as we get closer. So just just letting you know. Now heading into President's Day Monday, which is the 17th, it looks like, uh, for the holiday. If you're expecting to be heading to the attractions or going to the beach uh, as you take an extra day off of work and school, uh, looks like for now, I think we'll be looking dry. But again, all the rain chances here, as you can see up here in Georgia and Alabama, will stay farther up north if that's correct. But, you know, it's land of voodoo. You may, may never know it could change as we, as we get closer, but we're just hoping, especially for those of you that have big plants outdoors on the President's Day holiday, that, it, that maybe the weather will be dry. Uh, for that day, but just keep on checking back for any changes if you can. If you've been wanting to know how President's Day will be looking like, but for now, just hope it. We're just hoping, but it shows as of this evening looking dry here in the viewing area. And high temperatures will still be warmer with uh, highs yet again in the low to mid 80s. So there you go. All right, now let's get into uh, two weeks from yesterday, the day after the President's Day holiday. As you guys head back to work and school on the 18th, it looks like we'll see almost all of us staying dry, but there could be maybe a few isolated brief showers across parts of our viewing area. But any of that that does develop, if that's correct, uh, will not be all, an all, an all it will not be an all day washout, and it's not going to be impact impacting your like it's not going to affect your plans for outdoors if you're if, if you're planning on doing that as we head into uh, the day after the holiday. So just keep that in mind. And as we look at these uh, high temperatures below, it looks like temperatures may start to cool off just a little bit, but still looking warmer as we head into uh, the 18th with highs in the upper 70s to around 80 across central Florida due to, the, due to these uh, isolated showers that could form from north, from yeah, from northeast to southwest, what it looks like in the motion as we head into uh, that day. But again, it's land of voodoo, so that could really change as we get uh, closer. So just keep on checking back as we get close to the uh, the following uh, work week. All right, two weeks from today, Wednesday the 19th of February, it looks like we'll see yet again another dry day in central Florida, but, but I cannot rule out maybe a, a, an isolated brief shower here, which is what it shows in the GFS west of I-4, but otherwise the best rain chances will stay farther up north. Uh, so just keep that in mind here. And as we look at the high temperatures for that day, still looking warmer with highs in the mid-80s here. So it looks like the cold front... That's going to be uh, happening across parts of the Mississippi Valley region and push a little farther south, which may be looking a little bit slower as we head into uh, maybe late next week into the following week. It looks to be uh, cooling down and down those temperatures here, but looking chilly, too, with highs in the 30s and 40s across Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. But luckily, ahead of that, we're still going to, st we're still going to stay warmer here as far as the temperatures go as we head into uh, the following work week. So... That's a possibility that it may continue, but you just may never know, since we're in land of voodoo country, that could change as we get uh, closer. So we will see what happens by then. All right, now heading into two weeks from tomorrow. This is for Thursday, uh, February 20th. It does show that we can see maybe a few more isolated brief showers by quick moving across central Florida, but otherwise looking partly sunny, if that is correct. But again, land of voodoo, so that could always change. As we get closer and as we look at these uh, high temperatures below, and I believe it looks like the next cold front may, be, may start to uh, slide in just a little bit, and that could bring temperatures a little bit cooler down from 80s into the upper 70s, maybe, maybe mid-70s as we head into uh, that day. So that's something we'll have to uh, uh, watch. But again, it's two weeks off here. It's too early to tell if this will happen. So as always, that could change as we get closer, but just keep on checking back here on Facebook Live for any changes. All right, as we end this uh, update for tonight, we're going to end with uh, Friday, February the 21st. It looks like we'll see maybe a little bit of a good chance for, for some showers, but still looking lower as far as rain coverage go. So about a 30% chance of showers, we'll call, as we hand it to you that day, but not it doesn't appear to be an all-day washout at all. But yet again, also behind it, another system may try to develop here across parts of the Mississippi Valley region that could get another good shot of precipitation as we hand it to the following uh, Friday, but you know that could change. Once we get closer, and as we look at these uh, high temperatures down below, it looks like we'll still be looking warmer. So I think I think it'll just be it'll just be the temperatures will, that will start to cool down just a little bit with upper 70s to near 80 as we head into uh, the 21st. So 
So we'll see what happens here. But again, that could really change as we get closer. So I guess all this chilly weather is going to stay farther up north as the front, you know, I guess will, you know, uh, continue to weaken and also fall apart uh, as we head into, again, not just late next week, but possibly the following week here. So, so yeah, we'll see. All right, guys, we're going to start wrapping up this uh, Facebook Live video feed on this uh, Wednesday evening. So that's it for the uh, forecast video update. And I expect to have the next video posted here again tomorrow. If I get up on time, I'll have I'll do the morning forecast video update. But if not, then it'll be the same time in the evening between 8 and 8.30. So you guys can join me for the next uh, update. And, of course, we'll track these uh, storms for you guys as well uh, as the squall line does get closer. So, again, that's the biggest story we're, we're going to be uh, watching uh, carefully as we head into the next uh, 24 hours. And as always, I'll, I'll continue to post more notes or updates on my blog and uh, Facebook pages 24-7. But in the meantime, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday night, and I'll see you all tomorrow on this on the weather alert day of severe storms right here on Facebook Live and, of course, for the weather update, too. All right, you guys, uh, take care, and uh, God bless.